Hey guys, welcome back. Today is the third episode of the Advanced PvP miniseries. Me and Matt are going to bring you the Buffer Zone, and we're going to explain to you why the Buffer Zone is of vital importance to any base. So stay tuned, and thank you for coming back to Titan Shield Gaming. <laughs> but that bad. Alright Matt, you ready to build? Hell yeah. Hell yeah man. Okay, so me and Matt have been busy. Our beautiful scenery right here. As you can see, we got our base started. Now the previous video is what we've done is basically we went in here and we laid down double foundations. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's a pretty cool little trick. And after the double foundations, we actually went into reinforced walls. That was the second video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out, guys. And at the end of the second video, we actually did, we showed you guys a little trick right here. If you haven't seen what we did there, I'll give you a hint. Look at the screen. It reads it right there. You can thicken up your walls even more. Now, this is going to be our buffer zone episode. This buffer zone episode is what me and Matt have figured out over the course of being raided repetitively many times on different servers. The buffer zone is what's going to keep you guys safe. People who are going to raid you are going to have the time, the resources, and the manpower to do it. So what you want to do is make it the most painstaking, mind-numbing, uh, resource-draining experience that you can do. Right, Matt? Hell yeah. You want them like, what was the longest raid someone took to get into our base last time on one of those servers? Hours. 14 hours? Yeah, uh, we no. weren't even online. There's no way it was 14 hours. I, mean, I would say no. 8 hours. No, no, it was 14. Damn. Good well, thing I was, was sleeping. Eight hours when they started to blow into our, uh, to our main base, but it was 14 in total, draining our turrets and all that. Damn. Good thing I was sleeping and didn't have to experience any of that. Yeah. <laughs> were you up for it? No, none of us were. Alright, cool. Well, I guess one of our allies told us that it took that long. Alright, so basically this is the buffer zone, guys. You guys definitely want to have this in your base. Um, you can do multiple things in it. You can put turrets up if you want to prevent people from running in here and blowing into your base. You can store dinosaurs in here if you want. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that because they'll die. <laughs> but uh, basically what we like to do is we like to store pillars. We put pillars in here because there's two reasons. One it's an added layer of something they have to go through so if they're firing rocket rockets they gotta freaking they, they just gotta shoot through the pillars in order to get really into the next level of uh, metal and also if they're in here blowing things up it's really hard for them to maneuver so that's a really good benefit but the biggest benefit of all is structural benefit the pillars are going to keep your base structurally up and working here's 50 matt all right so me and Matt are going to go pick each side and we're going to go and do what we usually do. Now, a weird little mechanic of this map is that when you lay down pillars, you can actually lay them down very close to each other on one axis of the map, but on the other axis of the map, right here, they won't snap that close. They go way far further out. So we just tend to, on this one axis, just equal the other one. We like to, you know, we could snap another one in here, but we're just going to go ahead and snap the other ones in between, space it up properly. So basically, you lay all your pillars down around your perimeter, and they will actually hold up the structure. So if they blow into these walls and everything, your ceilings and everything, is they, they're not going to be affected. Like, by the time you ring your whole building with these pillars, and we have sometimes done the inner part too you literally have to take out a good portion of foundation I'm talking probably about here from that corner before your building starts falling apart and when it does, even falls apart it's usually the first level and the second level is held up by the pillars was we put ceilings on top of these pillars in order to compartmentalize everything and make it more hard for people to get in but what we actually encountered was they blew a hole in the above part they jumped in and used that as a way of getting up to our second floor where all of our good stuff was so now we just leave the pillars this area completely vacant so if they do blow up from the ceiling they'll fall straight down to the bottom and die hopefully 
and not be able to get out. And that will actually take a guy out of the raid. There you go. You got the pillar set up and you got that buffer zone as you can see here. Now we're going to move on to dino gates. The whole trick of this is to line your dino metal dino gate up to the tiles on your foundation or if you have walls in nicely like that it will line up perfectly to the wall but see how this is kicking in and out like that I just want to make sure I do it the right way so I'm gonna get you guys to see this I'm gonna line it up with the tiles make sure they're nice and lined up because that you want this to fit like a glove okay so once you get it lined up hit K your third person view now this will lock it into that that sh that place you can still move around all over the place but it's gonna stay exactly where you line it up so <laughs> there goes Matt with with easy's body uh, basically you want to get this to go just to the edge so what I like to do is zoom out here and just focus that edge see how that green is just coming out you want to hide it just behind it, but you want to make sure that these walls are not, there's no gap in between the wall and the gate, just to make it look really nice. So that side and this side look okay. Okay. So I think that looks relatively okay. I'm going to snap it in for you guys. <laughs> that stop. The trick basically is to hit K, kick yourself on a third view. Hit your action key for your next one. Go back into third view by hitting K. And it's going to look wonky, but what I want you guys to do is to slowly back up. If you slowly back up, it'll kick to normal again. And then you want to go a little forward until it starts going wonky. Right before that, see? So you want to get it right there. There you go. You got your second gate right behind the first. So you do the exact same thing. You hit K to kick out. It hit your action key for the next dino gate. Hit K to go back in and an inch back closely. There you go. So now you get some really nice spacing there and all the doors are together. So you get a door with, you get a frame with, looks nice, looks really nice. So now you're just going to put the doors. So the trick to this though, is when you snap in the doors to save yourself a lot of time and trouble is you snap in the first door pin code it to what you want the keypad to be so in this video I'm just gonna go uh, I'm gonna go one three four six so one three four six go to the next one snap it in one three four six you're gonna have this whole side wall and you're going to want to put walls. You want to snap your walls in to cover this area so if they can get in, they can't get in that way. Me and Matt are going to do that and we'll be right back. This is coming together very well. I like it a lot. We have our double foundations. We have our foundation protection right down here. We have our double thick walls on the outside, our quadruple on the inside. A nice long defensive hall, hallway of dino gates so you can store your dinos in here overnight they don't get killed and you can close this up whenever you want with a keypad it's just looking great well I hope you guys enjoyed the episode this episode was all about buffer zones buffer zones are vital for your face base defense now this base defense is gonna be here in order for two reasons one an obstacle for your enemy to get through again you don't want to put turrets in here, trust me. I tried it before, it doesn't work very well. You want pillars. Now the pillars are going to do two things. It's going to prevent them from getting in very easily. And the second one is, it holds up your base even more. So if they go in there and they manage to get into this first floor, which is just useless stuff like normal, uh, wood, rock, so on like that in the vaults, what they're going to have to do is destroy quite a bit of the foundations, which are double. So they're going to waste so much ammunition so much grenades, so much C4 and rockets that it's not even worth the raid. So if they do destroy, let's say, quite a bit of the foundations in here, these pillars are going to keep your walls, they're going to keep your ceilings, and they're going to keep every other level in your base relatively structurally sound. Now, they will fall, some of it will fall if they take out more than half of these foundations, but it's going to be quite a bit of work for them to do it. And hopefully by then you're online, you're fighting them, or you're fighting them the whole time and they retreat. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked it, please give me a like. If you want to come back and watch the rest of this base go up and all the cool little tricks and everything, please subscribe. But leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this series so far, if you're enjoying it. So I'll see you guys in a little while, and I hope you have a good day.